welcome to the channel um in today's video we are going to be talking about how to rank your preferences for your training speciality apologies for a very low voice and possibly some coughs in this video um but we have to get on with the video because i have been receiving tons and tons of instagram messages regarding ranking and preferencing now that i've been in training for a bit some time now i feel like i can give better uh, sort of guidance um, i hope that the video answers all of your questions and without further ado let's dive into our video okay so there are a few very very specific points that i would like you to think about before you even start the whole concept of ranking um, what is ranking how does it interfere with your training uh, speciality and offers let's talk about that first because that has been asked several times um, so regardless of how you rank your own preferences there's going to be a national rank for you so say for example if your choice of speciality has 200 seats and you are 180 uh, in those 200 people or 200 seats Regardless of however you rank your specialty training, you will get a post. Alternatively, if you are someone whose scoring rank is 201 and there are only 200 seats, then if somebody leaves any seat empty, that's the seat you're going to get. Regardless of how you've ranked, if you have put that deanery in your ranking, which has been left empty and you're next in line in the rank, like you're 201 out of the 200 seats, Whoever, say, for example, leaves York, and even if York is like your 200th choice, you are the person who is going to get that particular seat because you're next in line. I hope that makes sense and has answered most of the Instagram messages that I've been receiving. So regardless of how you rank your places, if you've ranked all of them and you're next in line, you will get that particular deanery which has been left empty, regardless of whatever you have ranked it. Even if it's your thousandth preference, but you're next in line in national ranking, you are going to be offered that specialty first because you're next in line. So the person who is 202 and they ranked York as their first preference, right? They're not going to get the offer because you are in next in line merit wise. So merit comes first and then comes anything else right i hope that clarifies the amount of panic people get when they're ranking um and now we're going to talk about actually what you should think about when you are ranking the uk has a lot of training specialities obviously i am in anesthetics but there is imt there is accs anesthetics and ed and acute med um and there's tons and tons and tons and all of them have various ears so some are four some are three some are i don't think there's any two left but i think core surgery is still two uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that's what I'm aware of. Um, and so when you're thinking about ranking, you need to think about how you would preference the deaneries. I have a separate video regarding deaneries. If you're confused with me using the term deanery again and again, uh, I'll put that in the cards below or above and you can watch that video. The first and foremost important thing is, and this is an ideal world, guys. This is not you ranking when you know your rank this is before that so this is the time where you will think about and you'll do your research so don't think about oh my god how i will rank and what will be my national rank and how it will work for me and etc etc no just rank right now thinking that you will get in and you will get your first choice so what is your first choice going to be um and that depends on four things first is your support system and it's a bit difficult to talk about support system for IMGs because whenever people talk about this and discuss their rankings with me, um, they're, when I talk about support system, they're just like, well, my family isn't here, so I don't have a support system. You're kind of mistaken in that aspect because if you have been doing a trust rate job anywhere, or say, for example, you were a foundation trainee and you've been doing a foundation year job somewhere, you must have made some friends, right? You must be having some form of networking going on. Uh, you must have worked in several hospitals or some departments, even if it's a small DGH, people will know you. Um, and that is your support system. Um, you don't have to have your blood relatives near you to be having a support system. Support system essentially means anybody who could give you an emotional support, physical support, um, mental support or training support. 
and all of these can be provided by anybody it doesn't need to be somebody who's your blood relative obviously i don't have anybody here so does that mean i have no support system no you eventually you will make friends you will make people you'll make mentors uh, in your mind you'd be like oh these are the people i would like to follow and those would be your support system so regardless of whoever you are if you have a support system try to be nearby them okay and this means that obviously you'll be choosing the dini first where you've been working currently but then you use your geographical map obviously i'm not from the england so i don't really know where every every place is and so i literally when i was ranking took out the map and looked at like driving and train distances and then an hour was my like circle to rank places so i ranked the first place for my support system was then as you know the distance went by and an hour i thought about that and but after an hour i was like okay now i'll choose something else the next thing you will think about is another hub another central point another baseline camp that you can make um as your sort of as i said hub um for me i quite like london i like going there it reminds me of home um and so i thought of london and then again same thing i did so i chose london and then i started ranking all of those deaneries and then i went an hour away again and then chronologically i just kept going further and further and further and further when i was again an hour away from london i stopped then the next thing i thought about um was the size of the deanery so as i've if you've not seen that video i'll just give you a quick recap so a deanery can be very big very small it could comprise of more than 10 hospitals just three hospitals etc so i thought about the deaneries that i was ranking now and these were like big huge deaneries by the time i came to ranking further down in my uh, preferences i realized that i actually have come up to those deaneries which are quite quite big um and obviously i didn't want to go to the north i didn't have i didn't want to go to wales like all of these places but my biggest advice here would be rank everything if you are fighting for a competitive speciality and your goal is to get in rank everything because you essentially want to get in isn't it so say for example even if you don't get your first per preference that's fine you will accept something and so ranking is very important and so that that's what i'm saying so i looked up the smallest industry i could find ranked that then again an hour away and then i started you know sizes by sizes by sizes i th thought about deanery because i didn't want to sort of keep rotating again and again um and department wise yes you do rotate a lot um sometimes for anesthetics especially you rotate every three months which can be a nightmare uh because if you have to keep relocating yourself it becomes very very hard especially for us people who don't have a home uh, well, we do have a home, but we're renting, right? So we don't have a parent house where we could just dump our stuff and go start living in some place um, for three months and then come back to our parents' house. We don't have that option. So we'll be moving everything again, again and again, if we don't have like a smaller deanery. So that was really important for me. And it would be important for you as well if you are an IMG and you are currently living by yourself and you will be living by yourself for a prolonged period of time. So yes, again, think about the deanery size, think about how many hospitals are involved and how far away those hospitals are. Um, some deaneries are very, very big. As I mentioned, York is quite a big deanery. Um, it's Yorkshire and Humber. Basically, the deanery is quite big and it's a lot of commute involved. And you actually will have to move every few months if um, you actually end up in that deanery. Most people who live in York want York. So ideally, you wouldn't be getting York in the first place. But if you end up there, then be careful of not accumulating a lot of luggage with you. Uh, we do have relocating packages, so the deanery will reimburse some of it, but not all of it. So you will be losing some money. And plus, it's quite stressful. Like now that I have sort of A, relocated from my home country to another country and now relocated from my actual base camp to a new place, I do feel like it really, really tires you out um, learning everything again and just, you know, from scratch. So if you can try to take time out and try to rank the smallest deaneries first and then go on. Finally, this one is only for people who are doing GP training or IMT or those kind of um, training pathways. Um, for anesthetics, it doesn't really matter because our training is anesthetics based throughout our ICU uh, and it doesn't really matter which hospital we're doing it in. Uh, but for example, you're doing GP or IMT or so on and so forth, you will like to see the subspecialties that are being offered in your um, uh, in your training post so when you click on oriel it will show what kind of subspecialties are there 
and again if you say for example want to do cardio you would like to have cardio in your core training one two years and in the third year you're obviously going to ask for cardio again same goes for renal and gastro and all of that stuff if you're a gp you would like to have a little bit of gynae a little bit of peas a little bit of psych like all of those things and obviously this is very niche this is a very ideal world where you know you've ranked everything else and you're left with some places and they still have some some specialities that you could do and so essentially you will just rank those according to what you like in manner of subspeciality um and then yeah this is it these are the four basic um points how you will rank your training preferences um it's not the end of the world if you say for example don't get your first choice uh i do understand that it's it's a very daunting experience it's quite hard um and i know on a personal level how how scary it is to um relocate um especially because obviously i've done it from a country to another country and now i actually don't want to do it from a city to another city um so i do understand where you guys are coming from on instagram and the questions have been very repetitive that's why i made this video i hope that this video helps you guys and um, at the end of the day, guys, make sure that you're taking enough time and enough research during this this actual moment when your um, rank, national rank hasn't been announced and you have the time to preference everything because it is open right now. So if you actually take your time to rank every single post time by time, step by step with thorough research, then when the time comes and offers come out, and say for example you don't get into your first choice but you have an offer you could safely accept the offer with an upgrade button that means that anything above your current offer is something that you want because you have preferenced every single rotation carefully and that is the only benefit you get if you do rank very 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 thoroughly then you can choose the upgrade button so you'll quickly accept the offer and then you can choose the upgrade button and then you can wait for your offer to be upgraded to obviously whatever the next was in your upgrade okay i hope that makes sense i do have a video regarding upgrade hold and decline um there are a few questions regarding that as well so i might have to make a new video for that i tell this to everybody it is not the end of the world you will do it if you love something it will come to you so make sure that you keep a positive mindset throughout this really, really, really daunting experience of your life. Um, and best of luck. Take care. Bye.